Michael Burry's latest warning for the 2022 recession and stock market crash. Well, Michael Burry is the founder of Scion Capital LLC, a fund he managed during the great financial crisis of 2008, reaping billions of dollars in gains for his customers when the American housing market collapsed. Overall, a fantastic investor. However, he has something shocking to say. Bet you want to know, right? Although he says a lot through his tweets and social media engagement, if you aren't active there, no worries, we've got you. So welcome back to Finance Insights. And if you're interested in stock-related updates and news, this video is for you, so stay tuned. Burry's usually a year or two early in his trades and gets out a few months early, but he's usually right in a significant way. This holds true regardless of whether it was his early value stock picks, legendary short mortgage loans trade, GameStop deep value investment in 2020, or Tesla short in 2021. The following are some examples from his past work. On May 19, 2005, Michael Burry completed his first transactions involving subprime mortgages. He purchased credit default swaps from Deutsche Bank in the amount of $60 million, putting $10 million on each of six different bonds. When his wager against the housing market was successful, he was able to sell all of them by April of 2008, resulting in a profit of $100 million for himself and $700 million for his investors. In the month of August 2019, Scion Capital made the announcement that it has purchased 3 million shares of gaming and electronics retailer GameStop for a total value of $16.56 million. This indicates that Burry purchased GameStop stock at an average price of roughly $5.52 per share when he was accumulating shares. Despite the fact that he did not profit from the exponential rise in GameStop stock to $438 per share in January 2021, he was able to build a position in the stock when prices were in the single digits, which means that he probably doubled, tripled, or even quadrupled his money by the time he sold his shares in the fourth quarter of 2020. We do not know when he left the game during the fourth quarter, but we do know that he was not present for any part of the run-up that Wall Street Bets and Reddit 2021 experienced. He came very close to pulling off the ultimate big shot, and if Christian Bale had been available again, they would have had to film a new movie. Because a triple-digit return on investment is the goal of a deep-value investor, which is the major methodology that he uses, and he was probably extremely thrilled to have made such a return on his exit in 2020. According to his most recent 13F filing for the quarter ending on September 30th, 2021, it appears that he has given up on and left his substantial positions in Tesla puts and ARC puts, and he has significantly reduced the amount of stock he is holding. He was convinced that hyperinflation would eventually materialize, but in the short term, his bearish stock wagers kept losing money, which forced him to withdraw his investment capital. Due to the position size and leverage of the put options, he was extremely near to having another two enormous massive short positions pay off exponentially, but he was just too early. Let's take a look at some of the recent predictions Burry's made and what he is seeing on a macroeconomic level now that we've established how accurate he typically is and how far ahead of the curve he typically is. Tweet from Michael Burry with a caution. On the 19th of February, 2021, Burry started sounding the alarm about inflation and excessive government stimulus. When he switched to a negative outlook at the beginning of 2021, he was in the minority, since the majority of people in the financial sector were positive and the majority of central banks and politicians believed inflation was just temporary. At the time that he issued his warning about inflation, it was still below the target rate of 2% set by the Federal Reserve. In the tweet that can be found below, Michael Burry appears to to me making a prediction that the market will crash in late 2022. The tweet was published on June 13, 2022, after the most recent bulk of the downward trend on stock charts, which indicates that he anticipates further decline this year. His prediction recently came up on June 30th of 2022 that we are only halfway through the recessionary cycle, even though the stock market had P.E. multiple compression, and the next step would be earnings compression. This prediction was in response to the fact that the stock market had experienced earnings compression. This indicates that he may be predicting that the current bear market's barely halfway through its course. Based on a P.E. ratio of 16 that has been considered historically standard for the stock market, this could indicate that the S&P 500 will trade for around 2,800 points. During a recession, first the P.E. multiple contracts and earning contracts. This is what Burry is warning about, and it's exactly what happened on Thursday when the United States officially entered a recession with a second consecutive negative GDP of minus 0.90% for Q2 after the GDP for the preceding quarter was minus 1.6%. The price-to-earnings multiple is a type of investor sentiment that shows how much value investors are willing to put on the current earnings of a company based on what they will be worth in the future, looking at potential growth. 
It shows how much value investors are willing to put on the current earnings of a company. This is true for both individual businesses, analyzing their predicted growth in sales, revenue, and earnings, as well as the competitive environment. And it's also true for the equity market as a whole as an asset class. Consider the P.E. ratio in the following way. One method for determining investor sentiment is the following. Price equals earnings times multiple. Investors will bid up prices based on results more aggressively and significantly the more optimistic and upbeat the economic outlook is. As the macroeconomic climate becomes more unfavorable, the price-to-earnings ratio will compress and prices will fall before earnings will decline. The market already accounts for an anticipated decline in profits. The fundamental market cycle begins with a fall in the price-to-earnings ratio of the stock market, and then it moves on to the beginning of a loss in earnings. According to Burry, we are only in the first phase of the collapse in valuation, and the second phase of the decline in profits has not even started yet. As the P.E. ratio on the stock market moves back toward more of its historical norm, he anticipates further losses ahead. The current P.E. ratio for the S&P 500 index over the past 10 years is 29.3. This is 1.2 standard deviations above the modern era average for the P.E. ratio multiple, which places the current P.E. ratio at a level that is 46% above the modern era market average of 19.6. When viewed from a fundamental perspective, the market's overvalued. This chart illustrates the P.E. ratio's historic trend over time. The definition of a market collapse is the down of at least 50% from its previous high, and this is the event that he seems to be alluding to throughout his tweets. About 16 months ago, he started thinking about this and tweeting about it. Therefore, the time range in which this will take place is in the second part of 2022. Be mindful that the most significant price increases occur during down markets. How does one profit from a falling market by shorting it? Selling a stock index short, such as the S&P 500 index, is the simplest way to short a market crash. This can be done by borrowing shares of an exchange-traded fund, or ETF, in order to sell them and then buying them back later at a lower price. This is the part where I explain the procedure. When looking at a chart, a bear market's regarded to have started when prices have fallen by more than 20% from their highest point. When prices recover to the point where they are down from their previous high by less than 20%, the market's said to have emerged from a bear market. So what exactly is a crash in the market? A reduction in the price of more than 50% from its previous high is regarded to be a market crash of the kind that Michael Burry is predicting. As soon as a price crosses above the important 200-day moving average line on a chart, it is commonly believed that a market meltdown may finally be finished. His prediction of a market crash is founded on the excessive issuance of fiat currencies, disrupted supply networks, and general macroeconomic weakness around the world as a result of the poor management of market economies all over the world. Hey, that's going to do it for today's video. We thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you like, share, and subscribe for more amazing content. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll look for you at our next video. Thanks for watching.